What's up, guys? Happy New Year, and welcome to the first episode of Between the Pipes of 2021. Archie again hey. with Wade. How's it going, buddy? Not bad, Archie. How are you, buddy? Not too bad. Uh, getting pumped up. The season is just around the corner. We're going to get a bit of a, a taste of the Leafs and what they've got to bring to the table tomorrow night in their blue versus white game. Kind of excited. Yeah, buddy, it's nice. Uh, we had the World Juniors on for the uh, week and a half there and got to watch some young junior hockey and, you know, some prospects of the NHL. So most of them are most of them on uh, Canada and I think 10 or 11 of them on uh, USA were already first round draft picks. So you'll be seeing a lot of those two uh, teams, young kids, and it was definitely a good uh, a good segue into into the season here for us all. For sure. And um what a tournament it was. I mean, it was a lot of excitement seeing Canada go undefeated the whole way. Um, and then, of course, the game that mattered the most that they really needed to win, they just, it, it looked like they were out of gas. They ran into a really hot U.S. goalie, um, and they just, they couldn't get it past them, man. Well, um, oh, man, I got so much to say about this. <laughs> I, Let's go. Canada looked so good. Um you're talking about like what 20 first overall draft picks on this team. A lot of guys coming back. Um, Byfield had himself a tournament, the McMichaels, the cousins and, uh, and the uh, Brian and um, Drysdale dude. Uh, I thought they were going to win gold this year. Um, I went into the junior tournament thinking that Canada wasn't the top team coming in. Cause I heard a lot of rumblings about Sweden and um, Sweden and even Russia because of this Askarov, even though, in uh, the game against Canada, how many times did Askarov drop his stick, bud? Like five times, man. I don't know. He had some uh, jitters going on. But as That's far fun. as the tournament, dude, it was crazy. We're sitting there like like my group chat was firing up. We're like, what is going on with Russia's goalie? He's dropped his stick five times. It's it's insane. Like what we've never seen this before. But uh, the tournament was really cool. Canada um, – I got to give it to the Americans, man. You know what? They outplayed us. They pl they gave us a taste of our own medicine, man. The way that Canada comes out against every team, especially in those big moment games, we're always dominating. We always come out flashy, fiery. First hit wants to be ours. First goal wants to be ours. USA didn't give us a breath. They were all over us for, for what was it? It was about... I would say about a half an hour of the game, man. That very first yeah. 30 minutes was was USA hockey. And it was good friggin' USA hockey. I don't think Canada's ever been dominated like that for that long in the in the in the tournament's uh history. It was unreal, dude. And uh, I gotta hand it to the Americans. You gotta give credit where cre uh, give credit where credit is due. And to me, America, you guys earned the tournament and uh you guys have bragging rights now. I mean, that's uh the last time, uh, the last four times now, Canada has met America in the gold medal game. Who comes out on top? The narrative is Canada is the is the land of hockey, and trust me, I I still believe it and everything. Um, we have the label Canada hockey. Hockey is Canada's game, but I'm telling you guys, Archie, Canada is everyone's game, and right now, uh, USA has an argument because. Their younger guys are coming up and their prospects and uh, and they're coming up and they're they're kicking our ass. You know, <laughs> there's no other way to put it. I mean, uh, we have a couple gold medals. They have a few gold medals in the last decade, and uh, you, and then Finnish, Swedes. Uh, look at Germany this year, man. Hockey's expanding. Hockey, hockey is great, and uh, I, it's it's just an ongoing uh, expansion of young kids coming up and coming up in hockey, growing and growing. And that tournament was great. It was really good to see what Germany could do. And uh, of course, all the main top teams like your USA, Sweden, Finland, Canada, uh, Czech Republic, they all had a great tournament. But at the end of the day, Canada got silver. So we can uh, take our hats, uh, tip our hats off to them for that. But good on the Americans, dude. Like I said, obviously Canadian, very, very uh, proud Canadian, but Man, they uh, they handed it to us and uh, they they gave us a good spank. So I'm sure I'm sure we'll never forget that one for sure moving forward. Yeah, and I mean you got to give them credit. They 
they they took it to us hard and, and not only that um it, it i feel that the, the the one person i feel bad for the most on team canada is the goalie levi he he had the most incredible tournament ever um for a goalie that nobody nobody really knew of or heard anything about before this tournament and yeah. um came in stood on his head kept him in the games and as the games went on he got better he could you could see his confidence was boosting he was improving his play his puck control um even his vision and and they were even explaining during the um the isolation period this guy spent his time focusing and and watching videos and, and doing little drills with himself in the room and whatever so it just goes to show the maturity level of that kid and um it was disappointing to see him not be able to win the game because i mean it wasn't even like he let in garbage goals you know what i mean like they they were nice hockey goals that got scored on him you can't put any blame on him for that um usa's goalie was was unbelievable knight was just on fire um he didn't get tested as much as I thought he would, but when he did, nope. he came up big and made some big saves for the U.S. too. So, uh, like you said, hats off to them. Um, well-deserved victory for them as well. Um, going back to Germany, how they started the tournament with a depleted lineup, half their bench gone, and they actually opted because they had the option to um, adjust their schedule or something when they found out that this was happening, and they opted okay. to go ahead. And keep it as is because they figured even if they had their full lineup, they figured they were going to lose those first two games. So they figured yep. let's leave it the way it is and play through. And it worked. It worked really well for them. And and they should be really happy about um, the tournament and their outcome and whatnot because, like you said, the, the hockey program is finally expanding. It's not just Canada, U.S., Russia, Sweden. You got the Finns who've proven they're, they're here to play. Um the the germans now so it'll be nice to see more teams kind of building around their programs um we got to talk about it because it's a hot topic the end of the u.s game they bring out that barrel slap the canada logo on it people were upset because they were calling it a garbage i don't see it as a garbage can i saw it as a, a wine barrel that's pretty much an oil barrel of some sort and then listening to the speech after the game and, and them describing that it was like each game was a separate barrel yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't buy it. I don't buy it because the story was not out prior to that. And after they started getting a little bit of heat for it, then this, this story came to be, what do you think? Do you believe it? Um, dude, that was, it, it was definitely weird, right? Um, you never heard of them coming out with this barrel. Apparently they had every other team that they were facing before the game slapped onto this barrel and all of a sudden, they win. Uh, well, obviously, because it's a ceremony and a celebration, and their the picture gets taken. They brought it onto the ice and for this for this gold medal game. But uh, dude, it's weird. It's a bittersweet thing for me because I don't I, I don't know if I can look at it as like okay, that's kind of unclassy <laughs> of the Americans to do. But at the same time, it's these young 17, 18, 19 year old kids who been playing against each other for years or even on the same teams in the O or Western Hockey League or in college or whatever, wherever they've met up. And yeah. uh, everyone knows that the rivalry between Canada and U.S. is one of the greatest rivalries in the world. So that being said, I think it's a good little cheap shot uh, just at Canada. But as far as the barrel, I'm not sure – like the way they explained it, because all we're going to know is what they say. And the way they explain it is – it was basically the obstacle that they had to get through. So mm. we were the obstacle, the last one, and bring, but bringing it out for their pitcher was, you know, I can understand Come bringing here. it out on the ice and leaving it there, but then having it in the group photo, like, see Canada's logo here? They're on this barrel. Yeah. And uh, this barrel represents an obstacle or garbage or who the hell knows. I don't know, but – they got through it, and it's just weird having Canada's logo plastered on the barrel. But I don't know. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're, uh, they're young kids. Uh, one of the, probably the captain and assistants came up with that idea before, prior to the tournament and said, let's do this. And they, uh, for, they brought it to the forefront and, and explained it to us in the gold medal game. And we would have never have known if they won silver, that's for sure. Yeah, and I mean, I, I feel like it maybe wouldn't have been so bad if they had – all the other teams they beat plastered on that barrel as well. Maybe not, or maybe like 
five or six barrels, whatever it was, to kind of <laughs> even things out. But to to just slap on Canada's logo, bring it on the ice for that pitcher was kind of weird. But I get what you're saying too. Young kids, um, for them, it's like, hey, it's it's been a constant battle. Whenever you hear Canada, U.S., same comp- conversation for hockey. Um, it's always who's better, right? So um, yeah. just going into some of our comments right now, um, we had the better team, but USA played a better game. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. On paper, we definitely had a team that should have dominated and won without any problems. Um, yeah. they, they had a better start. And then uh, followed up with Americans have no class. Um, so that's the argument. A lot of people are kind of upset. Um, of and, course. and I get it. It is, it is, it does show a little bit of uh, classless depending on how you look at it. Um, but again, I'm, I'm going to look at it like you said. There are a bunch of kids um, who just, they, they stepped you know, out and did the impossible. And there was a lot more people watching this tournament than any other previous jun- juniors because people are starving for hockey. And this was this was the the perfect segue into the NHL season. So, hey, like I said, hats off to them. Congratulations to Team USA, and uh, it is what it is. Archie, yo. So let me hear your take on this. Yeah, Canada and USA potential gold medal game, twenty twenty two. Canada wins the gold medal. Just for example. Do they bring a barrel on the ice with the USA logo or do they just keep it classy like Canadians do usually and take the picture and leave the bloody barrel in, in that 2021 history? Leave it for the books and leave that behind and don't look back. What do you do? Or do, or, or do you keep it going and, and bring that barrel on the ice for the win? I don't know. It's a it's an interesting topic because again the tournament next year is is being held in the same location so it's in Edmonton again, um, yeah. So I can see this barrel making a, a return, um, although it depends on on you know uh, the tournament organizers might say hey cut that out like that there's no need for it, or they might make these kids have fun and say okay like like let's let's do something and maybe. Canada ch- changes it and, and they don't use a, a barrel and they maybe they bring out a, a, a yard waste bag with full of leaves. I don't know. Like who knows? Uh, yeah, like- <laughs> some, just something, uh, something different, right? Uh, yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, you know what? Just touching on that tournament, man, uh, as much as we had our flashy Canadians and uh, obviously we watched every game. i actually, I actually only watched one American uh, USA game uh, prior to the gold medal game. And uh, I got to hand it to uh, who does, let me ask you this arch. Who does Zegris remind you of a little bit? The way watching him play, um, it, it, it's hard because I kind of see a bit of a, a hybrid between almost like an Austin Matthews and a Mitch Marner. He's got quick hands, but stronger body than Mitch Marner, more like an Austin Matthews. Um, the, the kid can play, man. I liked watching him play. Dude, he's uh, you you nailed it right on the head for me, man. As soon as I seen him warming up, and uh, he has a couple of videos out just with a quick minute or two warm up that he's doing, and uh, yeah. this kid has hands, man. One of the best hands that I've seen. So, and it just reminded me the way he was moving the puck, the way he stuck it to the tape. He was doing the lacrosse type uh, moves in the warm up, and it just reminded me of Austin Matthews, man. So. Uh, look out for that kid, Zegris. He's going to be a player, and um, he's going to be exciting to watch. You know what? It's too bad, Archie, that we couldn't have Kirby Doc and uh, Alexis Lafreniere play for that junior tournament because I'll tell you this much, it would have been a lot different, I yeah. think, anyway. I, and it's funny because, because those, I, those players can elevate, right? They're both leaders. So Yeah, and it's funny because I thought, you know, okay, we, we don't really notice these guys missing and we didn't because of the way we were winning all these games. But when it came down to it, the game that mattered the most, you felt it because we didn't have yeah. the guys that could, you know, the, um, Eberly to come out there and, and make that difference maker, you know, that, that the, kind of a play, the big so, game change moment. Yeah. Yeah. So we, the that's golden, when you the golden moments, it. man. Exactly. Those are the moments you know, that you'll, you'll remember. Uh, before we move on, Arch, I know we're going to move on to the next topic shortly, but I yep. just want to uh, spider web off you about uh, Levi here. Mm-hmm. Dude, you're so right. The kid was phenomenal through the tournament. And uh, 
I could kind of see what the USA was saying about this kid hasn't really looked like he's been tested properly by a team yet, which he has. He's made some big saves at big at key moments in games, and he was steady, stood on his head. Um, but what you said was the Americans scored hockey type of goals, man. It wasn't mm-hmm. pretty. It wasn't uh, go down and, uh, you know, take advantage of Canada and score this nice looking, pretty easy skill set goal. Dude, the first goal was a nice tip in front. Levi didn't have a chance, didn't barely seen it. It went right through him. And the second goal, uh, puck got lost behind the net, man. And who who has it? The kid with the best hands in the tournament, Zegers behind the net, tucks it back. And uh, Levi just didn't uh, know where it was. So that being said, Levi had a great tournament. And uh, it is what it is. That's hockey. That's the way the puck bounces sometimes, right? Absolutely. Um, so... Speaking of that's hockey, we've got hockey around the corner. Um, season set to start next week um, for most teams. Uh, we, we saw a few hours ago or earlier today some news about Dallas. Um, we were talking about it before the show with, was it six players tested positive and I believe two staff members. Um, so they've now been shut down and will not be able to start the season until at least I believe the 19th. Um, so their their season's going to be delayed. Yeah, that's unfortunate, um, man. Uh, we knew it was coming, right? Uh, yeah. Every other every other professional league in the league in the world is is dealing with these COVID nineteen problems still. So there's no exception with hockey. I mean, it, it's it's still teams. You're 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 talking about 30, 40 guys getting together, changing together, and uh, <laughs> and you know what? It's it. I, I use this term a lot, but it's a spider web kind of effect, right? You you got this guy, it's a, this guy, it's a domino kind of thing. So instead of having a household with a family of five or six, basically you got a family of uh, 30 guys that you're kind of seeing every single day and being with. And who knows if one of them goes out and gets something, brings it back, brushes his teeth beside one or two of the guys, boom, then they have it. It's It's a really crappy thing. I can't wait for COVID-19 to be over. Uh, I know it, I know that the vaccine is going to be coming soon. Like it's already here, but, uh, for, you know, people like us, I guess you could say, you know, the average Joe people, uh, in the background a little bit, um, who knows when it comes, but, uh, hopefully COVID-19 is, is history in the next, let's, let's guesstimate maybe six months. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that they've already pretty much announced that the season, uh, the upcoming season is going to be played. Uh, with no fans, um, and and I, it makes sense. There, there's no way that the fact that they've already been approved to not have this all take place in a bubble, and that they're actually allowing team travels, um, of course, only within Canada and the U.S. within the U.S. But um, we saw it without the season having started yet with Dallas, and now Columbus is taking precautionary measures too. So yeah. it's it's like you said, once it hits one team, now you got to look at contact tracing. Who did they play last? Who do they, who, where did they travel to? Who was the bus driver? Was it the same bus driver that took the other, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's so many factors that got to get looked at now after that happens. So um, it's not going to be as easy as um, the playoffs last season with the bubble that, that was super organized, very well organized by everybody. Um, But it also cost them. You couldn't couldn't leave the bubble. Yeah. And it cost them a whack ton of money. So I think now we're going to start to see pretty much what happened with the NFL season. You're going to get players dropping like flies. Um, that taxi squad is going to come into effect big time. Um, hopefully each team has a, has a decent taxi taxi squad because I feel like once it hits, it's going to hit because a lot of these players also generally live within the same complex. They might live in the same condos. And I feel like during uh, the season, they haven't really said much as to how – the, the teams are going to handle it in Canada. I know they're traveling back and forth, but like, are the Leafs all going to be living together in one condo or are they going to be allowed to go home after every game? You know what I mean? Cause that changes things. Yeah. So are they going to have their own internal bubble within? Um, you might think that they kind of have to, because how else can they control it? They don't, it's really hard. The back and forth travel, stop at a gas station, go get food. There, there's so many things that, that, expose them right so um i'm not sure how that's gonna all work but I, i'm glad to see that it's coming back uh we get to see the blue versus white tomorrow night um 
I was looking at some of the lineups for the Leafs. I'm so excited. Most teams have their number one power play. We have two number one power plays if you look at it right now. Yeah, um, I just I just seen it. So, so exciting. And on top of that, Joe Bowen is going to be doing the play-by-play tomorrow. So that'll be nostalgic for us Lee fans who love the voice the of Joe Leafs Bowen. Here, Joe. So that'll be nice too. But um, I, they keep showing the same clips of uh, – Austin Matthews ready to go. He feels poised. He feels super ready. Mitch Marner's made it clear that he knows he needs to improve his game when it comes to being stronger, taking more shots, um, trying to finish more rather than always go for a pass. So that'll be nice. And and even just seeing Joe Thornton and the confidence he's got, and he feels good. He's loving it already. And, and it, it, yeah. it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I cannot wait to see how he performs on that top line. And like you mentioned um, when it was said, it probably won't last all season. But no, I like that it's starting that way. And you never know. We, we haven't seen Joe Thornton play. And, I mean, his numbers in the Swiss League were pretty impressive. So um, maybe this rejuvenates him. You know, sometimes, you know, some guys get old, but the game doesn't change. And, like, for some players, they just, they just have that hustle in them. And they know that, you know, Joe Thornton's got that touch. So he doesn't necessarily need the speed when you got Matthews and Marner on the ice together, you know what I mean? So just make that clutch pass and, and get open. And, and I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be a really fun season to watch. Well, that's just it, Archie. A lot of people were um, commenting about this Joe Thornton uh, pickup here and they're wondering why and all this. And like we stated at free agency in our episode, it's as easy as this. Joe Thornton has one of the best vision He's the one. He has one one of the best visions in the NHL, hands down. The guy is a playmaker. He's one of. He's still, I would argue, a top twenty five overall playmaker in the NHL, and that's and that's actually a really good number. Um, mm-hmm. And the speed's gonna be. I mean, obviously, he's not gonna be skating around like a twenty a twenty year old kid. Okay, he's gonna control the puck down low. He's going to control the puck down, though. He's going to use his body because he's a big guy still, and he's hard to get the puck from. He's going to, he's kind of going to look like Matt Sundin down low. That's why you drop the shoulder yeah. a little bit, you guard the puck, and that's going to be Joe Thornton's game. And then on top of that, the vision, the passing, Matthews, one-timers, uh, Mitch Marner, magic. It's, it just goes two and two, and I think the biggest reason – for uh, bringing Joe Thornton up on there is not just because of the playmaking ability, but because you have a 22 and 23 year old kid who are stars in the league that can get back for you on the defensive part of the game. You know what I mean? So you don't need to have three guys back. You just need one or two guys back on forward. You know what I mean? That last guy can stay a little bit high or take his time and take the high guy. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's uh, I think it's a good move. That's what uh, Sheldon Keith stated. That that's why uh, Thornton's there because basically, playmaking ability and uh, Matthews and Marner can get back as quick as anyone in the NHL. So that's perfect. I love the line combinations. It's really coming together. It's really looking cool. And um, just going off what you said about the two power plays, it's going to be deadly. But I can't wait to see. Wayne Simmons stand in front of the net men and have a, uh, Hey, before I get there, yeah. everyone knows this power play is going to get good. Okay. It's, it's going to work. And so was the Tavares and Nylander power play. Matthews Marner, Tavares Nylander. There's our four headed monster of the last few years, but listen to this, Archie. Guess who is on the point of the second power play unit? Who called it? I never called the power play unit. I wasn't specific with that, but there was a player I mentioned that's going to come to Toronto and he's going to make huge impact right away because I was watching his highlights in the last year and he looks great. Can you name him? I'm going to say Jimmy VC. No, no. It is a defenseman. He's on the point of the second power play. Defenseman on the point. It would Nico Lettinen. Lettinen. Yeah, I forgot Nico about that. Lattinen. So on the first power play unit, you have Morgan Riley. And this was just dropped, what, today? These uh, per, uh, first and second power play lines. Yeah. 
So this just dropped today. I see first power play. You see Riley on the point, only defenseman. Second power play unit. You see Miko Lettinen. So obviously this kid's playmaking, his pass, his shoot, his passing, his shooting. It's uh, it's incredible. I can't wait to see this kid in a Leaf uniform. He's another weapon that is so underrated, so under the radar, and he's going to come in to the Leafs organization and he's going to make huge impact. Riley, Muzzin, Brody, Lettinen, Bogosian, uh, Sandine, Dermot, Hall, Lilligren. The, the list goes on. We have so much depth this year. I can't wait to see what the defense looks like for the Leafs. Freddie Anderson's going to have himself a good year because he's going to believe in his defense finally after all the years that he's played. We finally have a defense that he can look at and feel just a little bit safe with. And I'm telling you, to have that feeling as a goalie, that's got to feel good, man, that you're going to have some shutdown guys that are going to move the puck out of the zone quickly. And then you have guys like uh, Bogosian and, uh, and and Wayne Simmons that are and, and the leadership of Thornton and those guys as well that are going to make sure that no bullshit happens on the ice as well. It's good, man. I can't wait. Yeah, and, and I feel like even watching them um, skate around during their warm-ups and whatnot, the scrimmages, they just look meaner. They look tougher. You got you got men on the team now. You know what I mean? Like, you yes. got big men on the team. It's not just the young boys anymore. And, you know, even the young guys, they're, they're starting to mature. I think I, I may have seen Mitch Marner had a little bit of scruff showing. I was like, what what's that? Is that a little bit of a beard he's got going on? But, um, yeah. like Got rid of the peach. Yeah, we've got men on this team now, and and you're right, Freddie Anderson. Um, this is probably going to be the best year for him because contract, contract year, year, Archie. Yeah, contract year. You want that extension with Toronto, and if not, you want somebody to want you, right? So you have to play lights out. Like you've got to be on your game. So um, I think we'll see the best performance out of him. And I kind of like that the Leafs are not discussing extensions right now. Why? Why? Why rush it? Don't talk about it yet. He said he's going to block it out, focus on the season, and see how it goes. There's no point in offering him all this money right now when, again, we, we don't know what's going to happen with him. We don't know if um, his performance is going to be worth that. We have yeah. backup plans upon backup yep. plans. Like we've got we've got plenty of help back there. Um, so it'll it'll be interesting to see what happens, and I feel like it. we're definitely going to see the best – performance out of him because of the fact that he wants to earn a spot whether it's with the Leafs or or anywhere else really um exactly and I didn't even mention just on my little rant about about Freddie and his abilities this year yeah um but also feels a little bit safer you have a starting season with Campbell in the back and then behind Campbell you have Dell huge huge to have that feeling that these it, it's big because it's a you know what I mean. You feel good because you're the starting goalie, and you know that your team, if if you have to sit a night out or get injured, your team still has a chance with these goalies. Mm -hmm. But it also keeps Freddie on his on his toes for the competitive aspect of it all because he knows if he doesn't play well. And then one of these goalies start getting a little bit hot. Campbell wins two three games in a row or something. Freddie's uh, all of a sudden Freddie's uh, sitting on the sidelines. Who knows, man? You're right, Archie. It is it is a contract year. It's Freddie's year this year. He's gonna have the best year of his career. The Leafs arsenal has so much depth this year. I mean, it's it's got it. Like as a Leaf fan, I'm sorry. I say I know I say this every year, but I never get into I, I never get in this emotional and this. Uh, um, enthused about a Maple Leaf team a starting roster and I'm just so excited about it and uh, I believe that with the talent of this team the toughness that we brought in another couple another year older on top of all our young studs and young stars been together chemistry has been built brought in the leadership qualities are all over the place now you got good goalies the second year for Sheldon Keefe uh, starting right from scratch uh, for uh, the first game. And I think the Leafs potentially, they're, they're, this could be the year. And they're, and they're more than capable. They're more than capable of at least making it 
far, like way further in playoffs than they have in a long time. At least, at least make it, I would say third round bound for sure. And then who knows what happens from there. It's gotta be. Safe to say. And I mean, and if, if that's the case where I know a lot of uh, Leaf haters or non Leaf fans are saying, yeah, yeah, you guys say that every year, but you're right. I mean, I feel like you'd be crazy not to be confident with this team that we, we that they've put together for the season. Um, it's unfortunate that a lot of these, you know, they're, they're one year contracts that will probably not be renewed. Uh, but it'll be great to see this, this team together uh, for this season. And uh, yeah, with Freddie, it, it also comes down to, you know, we found out recently that Henrik Lundqvist out for the season, didn't even get a chance to play for the caps. He had his surgery today, five yeah. hour procedure to fix whatever they had to go in there and fix. And he's on the recovery. I don't see this yeah. guy going back to playing a game. Like there's, that's a that sounds like a, a pretty intense procedure that he had done. Um, so you're going to have teams looking for goalies, and there's not going to be many options out there. So for the Leafs to have um, the backups and then have the the plan B in place, um, I'm not too panicked. I know a lot of people are saying, you know, I can't believe they brought Hutchinson back. He's not here for the Leafs. He's here for the Marlies and to cover because we now need three goalies. The the Leafs need yeah. or every team needs three goalies on that. Uh, squad in case something happens. So I'm I'm hey, happy Hutchinson with the three didn't, Hutchinson didn't play too bad. Just saying in the playoffs for Colorado, played pretty decent. Just saying he played okay, but I mean he's not like the Leafs didn't bring him and saying hey. Here's oh yeah. The answer. <laughs> so absolutely not. Oh yeah. So totally I, I'm agree actually more excited to see. I, I hope to see Aaron Dell get a few starts. I mean, it'd be nice to see him in there. I, I'd love to see what he's got. Um, RK, anything can happen, man. Remember Vegas? Yeah. Uh, remember Vegas in 2017 started out. They went through four goalies in the first month and a half of playing, right? So you exactly. never know what uh, you know. You never know what's what's thrown at you every year, and who knows, man? The tables can turn quickly, man. For for any team with COVID 19 still at large, with the injury bugs, and uh, it, it's really anyone's game. You have 56 games, 56 games to prove what you got. And it's going to be hella exciting. 100%. Um, and it's even looking at other teams and, and how they've improved. Um, I got asked, like, I mean, from a Leaf standpoint, I feel like they they really did a good job improving their team. Are they the yeah. best improved? Probably not. Um, it, just on the Canadian side, I feel like Montreal and Ottawa spent a lot of money this offseason. Yeah. Um and they definitely improved their team. They got tougher. They got bigger. They got better. Um, the Leafs answered some of their questions. Some might argue that the Leafs got older, which they did. They, they brought more veterans in, which they needed. They needed the leadership. But yep. who do you think is the most improved team this year to watch? Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm going to kind of agree with you there, Archie. Um, okay. I think... I, I'm not being. I'm trying not to be biased because I'm a Leafs fan. But I do think what the Leafs did in the off season, just with uh, with Brody, Thornton, Simmons, VC, um, those those players right there, uh, I think that it really improved what the team's going to look like and how the team's going to play. Um, and then Aaron Dell, obviously, in the background. Um, outside of Toronto. And I wanted to agree with you with Montreal. I think Montreal is actually, you know, looking kind of looking kind of scary in a sense. You got Jake Allen as the backup goalie who could be lights out if Carey Price takes a night off. You still have a hard goalie you got to get by. Um, you look at uh, I seen Josh uh, I seen Josh Anderson practice uh, a little bit there the other day for can uh, Canadians. They had a couple clips of him. He looks big. He looks fast, and he looks a little bit fierce. Uh, he hasn't scored more than what twenty goals in a season, Archie, or something like that. But something like that, yeah, something like that. Um, but I mean, and then uh, and then you pick up Toffoli, you pick up Josh Anderson, you switch out Domi, and then uh, who they just uh, rec recently pick up there, Corey Perry, who who's going to be a just a pass. I mean, Corey Perry is a little bit washed up now, but still, he's still a gamer, and uh, especially in big moments, big games. I'm sure he'll come to play. And um, Montreal definitely looks uh, looks decent, man. Um, Canadian division, Calgary kind of scares me just because they got Markstrom in that over there now. 
Uh, and then look at Vancouver. Vancouver has uh, Braden Holpe. So you got two good goalies on two Canadian teams now that already were good. So that definitely stepped them up. I'm going to stop talking about the Canadian teams now. I'm going to go right to, I'll say, I'll give you the top two American teams, I think, that are going to make noise this year. I think the Vegas Golden Knights are scary. Vegas Golden Knights yeah. picked up Petra Angelo. They have Fleury, Robin Leonard, and Nett. And then on top of that, look at their look at their roster. It hasn't changed, man. These guys have gamers still. Hold on one second. These guys have gamers. And uh, and they're scary to me, man. They've made it pretty far in the playoffs the last few seasons. And they're knocking on the door every year. They got a lot of leadership qualities on that team, but also a lot of like, you know, 25 year old guys that can do stuff like the William Carlson's and stuff like that. Uh, I think Tuck's still there, uh, players like that. And um, uh, yeah, so Vegas for me. And then uh, St. Louis is always scary, but you know who, if they're healthy, is a scary team to me, like always is the Washington Capitals, man. They had a little bit of an off year. And I know that Hen- Henrik Lundqvist is uh, just coming off the surgery. But at the same time, Henrik Lundqvist wasn't going to come in and be the starter. Samsonov is their starter. Yeah. And he had a good year last year. If if the Capitals have the right mindset, man, they still have such a good team, man. They're a weapon. They have... Uh, they have uh, Carlson in the back there. They have the Samsonov goalie. Then you have Ovechkin. You have uh, Oshie still. You have Backstrom. You have uh, uh, Kuznetsov. Dude, they could light a fire. Uh, Tom Wilson. They could light a fire and they could go with it, man. They're still a really scary team to me. But uh, those are my teams. Uh, most improved, scariest teams would be those three for sure. I'd say um, – <laughs> Well, we were talking about who's who had the best upgrade, but yeah, I would say pro. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, outside. So Washington's not really; they just scare me just for a playoff run. But I think yeah. Vegas just picking up Petrangelo really elevated. They didn't do too much, and it just elevated their uh, elevated their roster, elevated their chances. And you have a top five or six scoring defenseman now on your team as well. So we'll see what happens, bud. But. Leafs and uh, Vegas. Uh, I don't know, man. What's your what's your take on? I know you said the Leafs and Montreal. What about your American teams? Um, I'm gonna go with Washington too, because let's not forget they just added Zdeno Chara to their back line too. Dude, there you so, go, man. I totally so, forgot about that. There you yeah, go. So that's um that's scary, man. I mean, yeah, he's old, but he still had he's still a big body to move. And he's a presence, man. He's a presence any on the goalie ice. Is gonna love having. Chara as the guy clearing the path in front of the net. So I mean, he he's definitely going to make a, a a big difference for them as well. Um, it's hard seeing him in anything but Boston colors, even though he did play for Ottawa, um, and I believe he played for the Islanders at some point. Um, but yeah, like seeing him now in a, a Washington uniform is going to be interesting. I'm definitely happy that. We don't have to worry about playing any of these teams until <laughs> however the playoffs might shape up to look. I, I have no idea. They haven't even said anything about that yet. No, um, no formats or have been uh, released or anything on that. So they're, they're probably still working on it. They, they'll they wait They'll wait until to see what unfolds the last like 10, yeah. 10 games of the season. Then we'll probably hear what's going on. And Vegas, like you said, I mean, they, they still have that, that two-headed monster in net, which is a big deal right now, especially with – um, a condensed season is going to see a lot more uh, fast pace, a lot more games happening in a shorter span of time uh, while yep. keeping in mind playoffs. Right. So um, yeah, I, I'd agree um, on the American side. I'd, I'd say them too. Um, All right. I feel bad for Chicago uh, because doc is going to miss time there too. Doc and Taze buddy. Yeah. Doc oh yes. and Taze. yeah. Oh. <laughs> the tapes thing. The tapes thing was yeah, uh, Taze is out too. They didn't say COVID. So I'm I'm curious to know what it is, but it sounds like it's something pretty serious because he said it it was making him uh, lethargic and very weak feeling. Yeah, but scary stuff, man. But what's weird about that is you would think that 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 would be released though, like uh, you know, hold on one sec, but <laughs> I got a puppy here. We got a dog going nuts. 
But yeah, so for everybody still watching, I mean, it, it's uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Taves and with Chicago and how that impacts them. So you were saying about Taves, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, uh, Doc Taves, and um, and they were looking like a team that could really have a bounce back year. I mean, other than their goalie situation, which we were talking about before, was kind of weird. But um, as far as Taves and Doc, uh, I mean, you still got the brink out there. You still have Dylan Strom. Oh my goodness, dude! Alex Nylander's out as well. Alex Nylander's gone him. too, bud. He, he had uh, he Wait. has like surgery. He broke his leg or, or broke his uh, ankle or something. Yeah, so there's right. three. There's three big players that's not going to be Chicago's uh, management. Must just be. I mean, oh my goodness, man! They must be drained thinking about this. So it's yeah. too bad, man. And that's the other thing that they were discussing was how how will trades work during the season? Because yeah. you're going to trade a player, but you can't play him for 14 days. That's a lot of hockey he's going to miss. So yeah. um, I think they're going to try to make trades between Canada and the U. Like, I don't know, man. It, it's going to be weird. And I'm excited for the rivalries. It, this is going to be a hell of a way to reintroduce them. Um, it's going to be a lot of awesome fun hockey to watch i kind of i kind of not i don't like that we're not going to face some of the american teams i kind of like that whole thing but um i'm excited to see what this brings because i think it'll be really exciting as much as we hate um the montreal canadians for example that's that's a series that i cannot wait to open the year up with them and we shut down the season against them again so uh yeah. It'll be a really, really fun season to play and to watch these guys play and, and see how it pans out. The U.S., I think, is going to be a little bit different because there's there's obviously more teams and with the three divisions there and how they um, how that all pans out for them, it'll be interesting. But I think this is going to definitely yeah. re reintroduce rivalries to people who may not have seen them or some of them kind of burned out, like even the Toronto-Ottawa rivalry kind of burned out. We're going to see that come back to life, guaranteed. Uh, the West yep. Coast rivalries are going to go nuts. Like Calgary, Edmonton, I'm going to watch every game. Like it's just, it's going to be exciting hockey. I'm not just going to watch the Leaf games. I'll tell you that much. Like I'm, I'm just so excited to watch hockey in general. It's going to be fun. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't wait for the Canadian rivalries that are going to be rekindled here. And uh, man, I, I can't wait to see Edmonton and Mon- and uh, Edmonton and Toronto go at it, man. I think it's going to be awesome. Dreisaitl and, and McDavid against the, the Tavares' Marners and Matthews. Uh, it's going to be good, man. And uh, as far as the other Canadian teams, dude, like, uh, I mean, Ottawa plays us hard every year too, man. It's not like they're a pushover. And like you said, they've made a lot of trades. They have some ex-Leafs on that team. So I'm sure they would like to uh, give it a 110% every time we face them. And um, I, yeah, it, it's, we're going to see, we're going to see a different competitive edge of hockey and uh, hopefully a little bit more bad blood uh, comes up uh, and surfaces with uh, these older rivalries that haven't Toronto's never really had a rivalry with Calgary or or Ed, like they really haven't had rivalries except for the the eastern teams of uh, Ottawa and Montreal really. So yeah, let's exactly. see what happens man and um I I I can't wait Archie. I think it's going to be a lot of people I've heard some people say that they don't really like the Canadian division that all that much but I think as a Canadian oh, I think exciting. it's going to be really cool. It's exciting. It's different and it's I'm looking forward to it. Yep, absolutely. Sorry about my puppy, wait. man. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> no he's there street and he's, he's causing a ruckus here for me. Uh, he's usually he's usually got someone up there, but he's all alone. That's why he's going nuts on me today. No worries. Um, just before we move along a little further here, we got a couple of uh, promotions here to discuss or some of the promotional material for us uh, at The Buzz. We have shows going on every day of the week, pretty much um, ranging from a, a wide variety of things that you can tune in to watch. So I'll let you guys see what we've got uh, that you might be able to tune into at any point. And that is the wrong video. Um, here it is. War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for war. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. 
Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti ball? Be ready for war. Tell them I'm ready, any opponent. The crown heavy in every minute that shows it. A path only fit for kings. And you wanna know what this court means. What did you win this for? If it isn't getting more rings, then you gon' have to switch your team. Uh, trust me, it gets more mean. I'm a nightmare going up against your dream. First step is explosive like a bomb hit. Bet if I let it fly, I cannot miss. And you ain't got a chance at the top 10 when you getting clamped all night by your locksmith. On the block, throwing lobs to my top bigs. I'm a chef, no look with the top dish. Tie game, through the pressure as the clock ticks. Cross over, a step back, hit a shot, switch. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti ball? Be ready for war. This is how champions are made, but it never happens in a day. And of course, awesome. with. Along with that, uh, we do have the ability to follow us on social media so you can be up to date with everything that we cover, everything that we do. Uh, so feel free to check this out as well. So there you have that as well. Um, just going to one of our comments here uh, from one of our viewers, JM. The fact that they're back to backs is going to be great, which is true. I forgot about that. So it's, it's we're going to see a lot of uh, back to back games as well, which is always exciting. Which almost definitely suggests that we're going to see more variety between goalies. I, I don't think they're going to uh -huh. ride goalies that hard uh, in in a short season with that many back to backs. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, what did the Leafs the Leafs schedule? I think they play ten games in seventeen days to start. So you can imagine that Freddie Anderson won't be playing all ten. Definitely not. Um, so another thing we saw we're going to see new this year is division sponsors. Um, we've got the originally what was introduced as your North Division, which was the Canadian one. And then we had the East, Central, and West. Um, the NHL sold the naming rights sponsorship rights to the divisions in addition to helmet sponsors so i'm i gotta say i am surprised that it has taken the nhl this long to make this move considering international hockey's had this going on for as long as i can remember um plastering jerseys and helmets and really cheap looking stickers across the front of the helmet uh the pants everything the socks so I'm glad they didn't go that route because I hate that. It looks really cheap. Um, yeah, like, but like I'm, a NASCAR. I'm like it's like a NASCAR or something. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it took them this long. And I, I don't mind on the helmets, the little sticker on the side. You know what I mean? Like, and especially because, uh, for example, the Leafs kind of lucked out with Scotiabank being the sponsor. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's there, whatever. A little S on the helmet doesn't hurt anybody. Um, I hope they never touch the jerseys. I don't want to see sponsor crests on the jerseys and stuff. I feel like that'll take away a lot from the game and from the teams. Um, well, and from their Archie, that's, a, that's exactly why they won't put it on the jerseys. There's just too much history and too much pride in these cities and the, these logos and everything to decorate them in uh, Adidas or something. You know exactly. what I mean? So, yeah, um, yeah no, I, I'm, I'm glad that they didn't, uh, didn't touch the jerseys or the pa or the pants or anything like that too. And, kept it simple, put a little tiny logo on a helmet. It's barely noticeable, but they'll advertise it. And uh, they're doing it because of COVID-19 and uh, it's a revenue tool. And that's that's about it. And I understand why they're doing it, but I don't expect it to be there uh, may maybe next year too. And I don't know if they'll continue on with it once they've kind of uh, built back up the the, the pot of uh, money that they have and, and players are back with everything's back to normal, I guess you can say financially for the NHL, but who, whoever knows how that long may be, but, um, but yeah, but it's, to me, it's, it's unnoticeable. And like you said, um, Leafs got Scotiabank, they play at Scotiabank arena. So it's not much of a change or a sore of the eyes for us. Yeah. And I mean, and some people were upset about the division names. I don't care. I'm, I'm never going to say, oh my goodness, it's the 
the Scotia North Division. I can't believe. I don't care. I honestly don't care. It, it's totally cool. It, it has a cool look to it. Um, if it's all if it's all about advertising and promotional dollars for the companies for to to generate revenue for the NHL, um, it, you know, it doesn't. It's a no brainer. The league, every team, there was a lot of money lost, um, in, not just in hockey, in every sport. So they got to get creative. They got to get really creative on how they make this money back. And I feel like it makes sense from an advertising standpoint because what's the first thing you see on every uh, face off at the beginning of the game, the two guys helmets coming together, bam, yeah. logo on the side. If I'm the NHL, I'd start plastering referees with advertising. Why not put it on the refs? I guess, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I feel like advertising on the boards. And then we saw a lot of arenas started doing where what you see when you're actually at the game is not the same as what you see when you're watching it on TV. So the boards at the game, you may see them all saying, you know, Scotiabank, Canadian Tire, Tim Hortons, whatever the, the case is. But viewers at home might be watching that same game and they have what they, it, it's almost like a green screen where the boards all say Canadian Tire at the same time for 30 seconds. But obviously at the game, it's not like that. So they've experimented with that. I think it's pretty cool that they do that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, th there's several ways they can get creative. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be to, to plaster players like billboards. Like I said, I don't mind on the helmet, even if it goes longer, whatever, not a big deal. As long as they don't touch the jerseys, I'm cool with it. Um, but they got to generate money. I mean, again, we have a season coming up, but the biggest revenue comes from the fans. And without any fans in there, you're not making money. Your season ticket holders are getting really upset now. You know, it, it's, I would hate to be the person answering those phone calls that someone's got to answer um, because yeah, you know, it, it's the government, the government makes the rules here, but exactly. we've seen it everywhere. Rules are being bent. You know, you're not supposed to do this, but they're doing it. So people are saying, well, we're not supposed to be attending games, but I want to. So it'll be interesting because Again, once you bring a fan into the building, you need security, you need staff, you need cleaners. So it, it just snowballs, right? So um, I don't see that being an easy thing. However, that being said, I'm super excited about the news that they're going to look to host those two outdoor games at Lake Tahoe, which is wicked. Like the scenery is going to be insane. It's going to be so yeah. fun to watch that. Um straight up pond hockey. I don't think they're going to play on the water though. Like I feel like there might be a, a an insurance risk there. Um I'm I'm curious to know how they're going to do it. If they're just going to build a rink by the water or are they going to literally play on the frozen water? It'd be pretty cool, but I can't see it from an insurance perspective and liability perspective. What if something happens? You know what I mean? Like you can't drive a Zamboni onto a friggin' lake. So, um It'll be more of a scenery thing. It'll be cool, though, you know, with mountains in the background and, and stuff like that. So that's going to be fun. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, who knows, man? Maybe they'll just find uh, 200 feet of this the freshest ice ever, and they'll build a rink around it, and that's it. Get on. Let's play pond hockey outdoors and get back to the roots of hockey history. Yeah, it's exciting. Like it's So I'm happy they did that. I'm really excited for that because I feel like um, – like you just said, like that, nothing screams hockey history more than pond hockey. Where it you know originated I mean? from. <laughs> exactly. How it so originated. It'll be yeah. really, really cool and exciting to see that happen. Um, and uh, it sucks that the Leafs can't be the, the, in one of those, but it is what it is. It'll still be something. I'm going to watch as much hockey as I can. I'm not going to lie because I have missed it way too much. Normally I watch the Raptors, but right now you might as well call them the Crafters. They're one and six. It's pathetic. It's painful. Um, now I just read Kyle Lowry's not even going to play the next game due to a personal reason. He's probably fed up. He's probably demanding a trade. Who knows? Um, but just to kind of veer off topic for a second, at the beginning of the season, there was rumors that the Raptors could have landed in Harden and that the, the, the player going back would have been Siakam. I said they should have done it. They shouldn't have hesitated because right now that deal would have made them look a lot better. And people, you know, they say Harden shoots too much. The Raptors shoot too much too. They just can't hit the net. So I don't yeah. mind if 
Harden shoots too much because he drains a lot too. So um, I don't think I'm going to be watching much Raptors this year. Um, I- I've already had enough watching them lose and blow leads and just not play well. So it's going to be hockey. It's going to be a lot of hockey, and I'm going to watch as much hockey as I possibly can. I, you know what? I'm I'm in the same boat as you, Arch. I'm obviously <laughs> going to be turning on a lot of the games, and especially this Canadian division rivalry. Um, it, it's going to be fun to see. The, and there's a lot of new faces on a lot of NHL teams. Like this free agency uh, was was fantastic. So you're going to see some new star players uh, in different jerseys, and then also just. Uh, just uh, the free agency was good. And then just the uh, different players that got picked up off waivers and everything. And I can't even wait to see that. And uh, what I'm most looking forward to outside of watching, you know, Maple Leaf hockey uh, would be waking up in the morning, turning on sports center and just watching all the highlights of hockey yeah. from the night before and just getting like consumed in it. I love it. There's nothing better. Sometimes I watch the same highlights about three or four times in a row. I'm just a, I'm just a hockey fanatic. So <laughs> can't get enough of it, man. It's going to be great. Yep. And um, yeah, like it, I, I'm just, I'm so pumped. I'm so excited again. Normally I don't, I don't even care for exhibition game. This is even worse than a preseason game tomorrow. It is literally team A versus team B of the least. But I'm so yep. pumped to watch it just to be able to say, finally finally we get to see these guys play again and uh kind of get an idea as to who's still got it who's got the speed who's got the gas in the tank and is ready to go um a couple more comments here sean says uh i have to take the red scotia bank off the white helmet though change it to blue i agree because there's other teams That'd be kind of cool. other teams got scotia bank as well right so it's like yeah it's not just the leaf so they should have coordinated the white on the dark helmet and then whatever the team's color is on the white helmet. Totally makes sense, Sean. I agree 100%. Uh, he says, hopefully on the lake, agreed again. It'd be really cool to see them play on a lake with nothing but mountains in the background um, and just big spotlights kind of hanging and whatever. So um, good I'd stuff. I would, I would get jittery watching that game. I would be like – yeah. I'd have goosebumps, man. That would just bring me right back to, I mean, that's, that is so original, man. That's like early 1900s. That's all they had really, man, was some kind of frozen pond and, and I, or, you know, early 1900s, late 1800s, whenever hockey was originated, I, I heard it about three or four times through my life, but I always forget because it's a weird number, but um, no, it would be, it would be really cool, dude, if they could do some kind of pond hockey uh regular regulation uh rink size right for the guys mm-hmm. but um yeah no i'm definitely i'm definitely looking forward to that man what, what did they already announce the teams that were doing that yes yeah, so it was lake Tahoe. so i believe it was philly and i want to say pittsburgh of course it would be pennsylvania's teams no sorry not philly pittsburgh so it's going to be okay. Boston, Philly, okay, and Vegas, Colorado. So the Vegas, Colorado is going to be pretty cool. That's going to be cool. I, I have to say, yeah, I, that sounds intriguing to me. It sounds and entertaining. And they're going to go back to back. So it's going to be a February twentieth, February twenty first, back to back games at Lake Tahoe. Sweet. So I like it. We'll have to get. Out. We'll have to. We'll have to get together and uh, have a pint for that for those games, Arch. Hundred percent, because I swear to God, we better be out of the lockout by that time. I am so <laughs> um, I know. Speaking of pond hockey, this is the first time we're going to get to talk about it. If anybody has been following myself and Wade, and when we had Greg Ryder on the show, we introduced the A Challenge. Um, it was. It couldn't have been a better day for us to do it, and. Yep. Um, just so that everybody knows what we're talking about, I'm just going to show you instead of telling you about it, and then we'll, we'll have a little chat about it as well. challenge 
So that was fun. That was a really fun afternoon we had on a frozen pond, um, shooting some pucks around with Greg Ryder. Um, and a couple weeks later, we had Gilbert Dion on the show. And what a beauty of an interview that was. That was so fun. Um, so New Year comes, and we are both shocked. I get a message from Wade. Dude, check this out. I have no idea what I'm expecting to look at here. I click on it. Let me just share, <laughs> Let me just share what I saw. One sec here. Gilbert Dion, Montreal Canadiens, challenge accepted. Whiskey. Syrup. And a beer. Here we go. Woo! Let's go, Canada. I am Canadian. <laughs> so that, that was, that that was, was the awesome. Best thing ever. What a surprise. Um, we had no idea he was going to do it. And and on his pool, that is creativity, man. That is awesome. Um, so in case you missed it, it was a shot of – we did a shot of CC, um, whiskey, Which whatever you Canadian want. Club. Let's, let's – Let's get you guys involved. Let's get everybody involved here. So if you don't have the Canadian product, no problem. Show us what you've got. Make it your own. But let's see this challenge. Let's see you guys come out and do it. So you take your, your shot of whiskey, shot of some good old Canadian maple syrup, um, and then followed by beer. I mean, we did the, the Canadian. You can shotgun it, chug it, whatever you want to do with it, crush it, whip it on the ground when you're done like Gilbert did there in that video. And then just line up for a one timer, hit the net. You and, don't then give, the net. and then give us your best celebration. Yeah, and then challenge somebody. It, it's it's quite simple. And if if you don't hit the net, shoot again, man. Just keep it going. Um, but the point is, let's just let's have fun. Let's let's get this out there. Um, again, really exciting. Thank you so much to Jill Bear for for being such a trooper and and getting that video for us. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic to see. Hopefully we get more people. Uh, we'll be checking in weekly with other people who may also uh, be included in, in their own videos. If they want us to share them, by all means, we will definitely share those. Um, Sean chimes in here. Got to love how he adds the I am Canadian. I love that part. And I love how I he's am Canadian. <laughs> so good. So good. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you know what? Sorry, Arch. When we uh, when we came up with the idea, everyone, we, we it was COVID nineteen. Everyone's been kind of inside. Everyone's been isolating and quarantining, and the news is just downright awful. And uh, numbers are still rising and all that. And um, we just thought, how can we keep limited uh, people, you know, under five people or or whatever it may be, or whatever the restrictions may be in your area. And, uh, you know, get out and have some fun and do something and uh, and still have, you know, six feet distance and socially distance. And uh, we just came up with kind of, you know, uh, chug a beer, do a shot of whiskey, do a shot of Canadian level syrup, show us the hockey skill and uh, get out and get out and about and, you know, enjoy life a little bit in these hard times. And that's how the idea came about. And uh, like, we really hope that, some more people can start sending in some videos or uh, hashtagging a challenge and, and hopefully put your own little spin of creativity on it. And uh, it's entertaining. Uh, it's, 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 it's really entertaining. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, and at least you can get together with a friend or two and uh, shoot the video and uh, get them to do it. And um, on top of that, I mean, it's, uh, it's hockey time. So, Hockey's starting up, but a perfect time to do it. It's been cold in Southern Ontario. So the lakes and ponds are definitely uh, frozen by now. Get out, have some fun and show us what you got and let's see it. And at the end of it, all you got to do, we said um, we challenge you, right? So it would be good if, if you want to yellow two or three of your friends' names or tag them in the post that you make when you upload the video. 
then that way they see it and then challenge them. And then hopefully they do it within the week or two or whenever. That would be really cool, man. But uh, it's honestly just an idea to get everyone's mindset uh, elevated in a little bit more of a happy and positive way. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. So good luck with it. Have fun with it. And me and Arch really hope to see you guys, some of your videos and see what, what kind of creativity you guys put into it. hundred percent. And again, we can't stress this enough. Please, please, please. If you are doing it on a live body of water, do your due diligence, make sure that it's safe. Um, if it's been warm, do not go out there. Uh, don't try to be a hero. You know what I mean? Like we did everything we needed to do. We drilled holes. We verified you need at least four inches of thickness to be absolutely safe. Um, don't gamble. I mean, we don't want anybody getting hurt. Um, and at the same time, also keep in mind to respect any bylaws that may be going on right now in your area when it comes to um, the lockdown and, and private properties and whatnot. But again, get creative. I mean, we had one of our viewers here mention would have to be on the ro on road hockey in in the uh the left coast so or the west coast um he loved it sure hey if you don't got access to ice get on the street man it, it still works put on some rollerblades if you're in the hot weather uh get some running shoes on you want to get creative you got kids of your own you want to do something fun with them bring out the mini sticks with the little hockey net shots of milk whatever let's just have fun with it let's let's go let's make this take off um uh, and like we said, we'll share the videos each week as people submit them. So be sure to tag us on social media to make sure that we get your attention. Um, or if you want to send the video to us over Facebook, you can find myself or Wade on there. Um, but the best thing would be to just hashtag it, tag it on Instagram, uh, BTP Hockey, and uh, we'll be sure to air it on here. And hopefully we get some more videos. I mean... Gilbert was a great example, but again, you can do whatever you'd like. Be creative, make it your own. Nobody's put your own wrong. little twist on it, guys. Put your exactly. Put your own little twist on it, and uh, we're good to go. Um, and one last thing before we let everybody go, I had showed this video or it started to an error, but I'm going to show it to you guys now. Uh, the show is um, brought to you in part by Manscaped um we're ringing in the year with them as well as we kind of ended last year we're going to start it up again um we're here to give you new year's resolution that you'll actually want to keep the manscape package it's the perfect package on their website 3.0 is the below the waist grooming package you need to start the strong sorry to start off strong this year uh come out of quarantine with clean balls thanks to the lawnmower 3.0 it's waterproof skin safe trimmer Will reduce nicks to your two best friends great thing to have great gift to have whether you're giving a gift to yourself pick it up uh feel free to go on manscape.com use promo code btp2020 to get 20 percent off plus free shipping and uh here's a little bit of a clip for you There you have it again, our friends over at manscaped.com. Feel free to visit their website, promo code BTP2020, 20% off plus free shipping. Um, I was just scrolling through TSN's website to see if there's any updates. Um, nothing. The only thing there was to talk about was the addition of, um, or not the addition, the, the realignment of the schedule for Dallas and whoever they would have played in those yeah, games. Yeah, they third. Apparently they're postponed three games now or something. The first three games they're out. Yeah. So obviously right. whoever they we're playing against, I don't know how that's going to work, but no, no they'll impact. Catch up. They'll catch up. Yeah. Um, also with the Leafs, do you know anything about this game tomorrow? Um, I believe I know it's being televised. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. It's going to be broadcasted on yes. Sportsnet and Sports Center. Perfect. And, uh, yeah, so that'll be your team blue versus team white, kind of like the old days where they had the skills competition, except this is going to be straight up 
game uh, team against team. So this is their uh, this is their exhibition basically because yeah. there's no exhibition games this year. Yeah. So they're gonna be they're gonna be playing pretty hard, man. I mean, uh, they have a regular season game in about four or five days, so it's gonna be uh, there's gonna be a bit of intensity. It's gonna be fun to see the new additions to the team and in, in their in their in their threads. So. I'm most excited, obviously, to see uh, the big ones like Brody, Simmons, and Thornton. And uh, I can't wait to see a, a couple of the different line combinations. And even to see the uh, the Team B usually has uh, the players like AHL players and stuff like that. Maybe they, uh, maybe I catch an eye, you, maybe you catch an eye or uh, bat an eye at one of them and uh, they impress you somehow. It's always fun, these blue and white scrimmage games that, uh, that the Leafs usually do in exhibition. So... I'm excited about it, and what's uh, more exciting, guys, is that in another, what is it, five sleeps? No, no. Yeah, maybe five sleeps. Friday, five. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Five more sleeps, and we have NHL regular season starting, man. It's been a long time. There hasn't been a regular season <laughs> game for 10 freaking months, guys. So this is the, that's a long, long time. And uh, me and Archie show next Friday, we're going to have a loaded two full days of games. And uh, obviously the jitters of each teams, the new looks of each teams are going to be lost to talk about next Friday. And we're so excited to actually start really getting into the depth of different teams, different players, bad hits, good hits, good fights. Should fights be there? Was that goal uh, why was that goal disallowed? Everything that has to do with hockey, we're going to be talking about, and it's going to be a lot of fun, guys. We're really excited about it, and uh, honestly, uh, I, I can't even wait. I can't wait for Wednesday. So I'm just thinking about it. I, I, I'm getting jitters right now, just thinking about that. It's going to finally, finally be here. Maple Leafs versus Montreal, original six. Uh, teams going at it new additions for the Leafs new additions for Montreal and uh, they're going to size each other up because they're going to see each other 10 times this year 10 times it's going to be exciting going to be fun it's going to be a rivalry again man Montreal fan completely forgot. we're going to be shaking fists once again completely I hope the bad I hope the bad blood starts uh, changes to the offside rule so, oh, with the uh, so your skate can be off the ice now as long as there's a part of your body, even if it's a millimeter over the blue line, when the puck goes over, then you're safe, even yeah. if it's off the ice. Yeah. So the skate. I kind of no like the continue. rule. Uh, I think it's all right. It'll definitely save a lot of headaches because last year a lot of goals got called back because of this stupid rule, and in some cases, like we saw it in the juniors too, it, it's like. It had no impact on the play, so I mean, it, it's yeah. it's silly. If it's a if it's a, 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 a amount of like millimeters that has no impact on the play, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be offside. I mean, it's it's uh, it's something that I feel is needed, and it'll help improve a lot with um, goals being called on or off, and one less thing for coaches to have to challenge uh, because I feel like a lot of coaches lost that challenge last year too. Yeah, um, and it's a weird challenge, man. Like uh, it, the one in the uh, the one that just passed by, with the uh, that was the Canada Canada one, right? Yeah, yeah. Was it Canada? Yeah. So yeah. the the Canada game. That being said, um, I don't know, man. It's gonna it's gonna speed up the game, and uh, it makes it faster now too. You're not having that guy lagging his his his. He's not doing the splits to try to stay on side. He's just got to lift up his leg a little bit. And uh, still be on like a full stride in a sense, and uh, they're gonna enter the zone full speed, and that's it, right? Uh, it's it's good. I like the rule. Uh, NHL is always changing to be a quicker, faster, steady, steady paced game, and um, that's just another little tiny rule that's been eliminated. And here we go. Let's uh, let's get going with it. I can't wait. Absolutely. And uh, Sean mentions here it sucks when they go back sixty seconds before the goal and call play. Exactly. Exactly. So if it's that much of a difference, I mean, it, it, it is kind of shitty. So hopefully that'll uh, help speed up the game and, and keep it more fun. Um, so that is it. We will uh, we'll be back next week, as Wade said, with a lot more to talk about because we'll have a lot of games going on as well. So um, 
get those eight challenges in. Let, let's see you guys go before the season starts. Uh, let, let's get everybody pumped up and all the blood flowing. Um, make sure you enjoy that game tomorrow. And uh, go Leafs go, as always. Archie, Wade, and uh, we'll see you guys next week, man. Ciao, guys. See you next week. Let's get her.